blitz started happening right when the sun was coming up and uh i didn't have a, a, a sd card in my gopro so the first little portion of the morning here i wasn't able to get oh my god they're chewing though what is going on guys welcome back to another episode and before we talk about that moment that you just saw right there we have to really get a little bit of backstory on what led up to that moment that day where i got on that bite and the fish were just every cast it was pretty crazy but first we have to take it a few weeks back before that when i was trying to find the fish and i think a lot of people can relate to just the struggle the the hunt for the striped bass and just trying to get them the right place the right time the right conditions so that it all comes together into just blitzing conditions so let's take it back so after a few unsuccessful night trips in early november this was the first open beach trip that i took and we had a really nice outgoing tide but just nothing to show for it this trip here was a night trip that we took there was a big report of a blitz that was going on so we tried to get up there at night um, but we got there a little bit late and the fish were gone at that point. It's kind of hard when you have a job and you're trying to get on that blitz and you see the reports on either Facebook or Instagram just coming in and you're like, I gotta get down there. And you make the trip and there's nothing there. I, I bet you one of you guys have experienced something similar to that. But that's just part of fishing, you know? You try to get them at the right time and if you're lucky maybe you can get some fish the next time i went out after that i took an afternoon trip trying to look for some fish here's what happened there continuing on the hunt right now for the fall run the striped bass migration here in new jersey and uh we got a little bit of daylight here outgoing tide and uh, we're gonna work the beach a little bit strong west wind So we had some strong west winds on this trip, which made the conditions look very promising, but no fish until I went on this next trip where I finally saw some blitzing conditions and got a fish. Can we get out there? This is too deep. Here. Oh my God, dude, look. Yes, sir. Yep. Yes, sir. Woo! Gosh, it's like you're fishing in a lake. And basically that whole morning, the birds were just going crazy. And we were following them, spot hopping along the beach, trying to find the closest point where they were just blowing up on the bait. And the person I was fishing with there, JB decided, Steve, we just gotta stay tight here and just wait it out for a second because we've been spot hopping all day looking for the fish. And if it wasn't for him to just say, let's sit tight here and just wait a second, then I wouldn't have landed this one. <laughs> nice. Fast. Yeah, man. Good job. Awesome. Awesome, man. Appreciate it, bro. Yeah, man. As fast as those fish came in, they were gone before you knew it. There was this little sandbar out there in that clip, and this was during low tide. And just out of nowhere, we just saw some bait busting, and some fish just kind of came right in that channel. Fed for a few minutes. I was lucky to get one to bite, the next thing you know they were gone. And it wasn't until this next trip where I got on an insane bite in the morning. Only problem was I forgot my SD card. So the whole beginning portion of that blitz I did not get on camera. Probably landed between 8 to 10 fish before I decided to take my one keeper back to the car, put that fish in the cooler, got my spare SD card, and went back out there, and this is what I got. Okay. 
crushing the barbs down more definitely helped. Come here, buddy. Little guy. Probably the smallest one of today. Text. The bite is on right now. Gosh, it fights so hard. Oh my gosh, look at this. Every fish is a good fish. That's it. Look at that. Nice bass. Let him go right away. Yep. Gosh. They're right in that that surf where that breaking wave is. I just stopped at a convenience store to get some ice for the fish. I cannot believe that I didn't have the SD card in the camera in the morning. So I missed a whole big chunk of that bite. But my gosh, it was just unbelievable. Fish pretty much every cast, really good size ones. And uh, I've just been waiting all fall run for a bite like that. So I'm feeling super happy right now. So the next morning I took that fish to work with me where I filleted it in the kitchen. And this little step here is really important when you're filleting bass, is taking that bloodline out. If you don't do that, you're gonna get a really fishy flavor. So you're just gonna just run the knife down that bloodline. Just take all that out. And there you have it, the filleted striped bass. I got eight nice portions, a few other portions on the other piece of the fish. I'm gonna try some right now. Just wanna taste it. Whew. The moistness of that, oh my gosh. That is gonna be incredible. Wow. 
So I wanted to do a really special recipe with this striped bass, and what I ended up deciding on was a pan-seared striped bass with some grilled cauliflower, some roasted potatoes with some herbs from my parents' garden, and I finished it with a morel sauce. So I hope you enjoy this catch and cook, guys. Now here I have some dried morel mushrooms. Just gonna pour some boiling water on them so we can reconstitute those. Nice. Yeah, it's still good, and, we, and it froze out there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna put some of that fresh rosemary on the potatoes, along with some thyme. We're just gonna do a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper. Maybe a little garlic powder too. And we're gonna get those roasting 400 degrees until they're golden brown. So here I have a yellow cauliflower, like a golden one, and a purple cauliflower here as well. And we're gonna cut this up, put it on the grill so we get just a different layer to this dish. And try to leave it in nice sized pieces. Olive oil, salt and pepper on this, and this is going right on the grill. Perfect. Now that the cauliflower is grilled, we are gonna dice up some shallots for the morel sauce. You can do a nice fine dice on these. I'm gonna cut some chives for the morel sauce. Here we have those morels. They've been sitting in the hot water for about 20 minutes or so now. We're gonna strain them out. Make sure to save this juice because we might use some of it in the sauce. And we're just gonna take the big ones, slice them down. The really small ones we can leave. See, that's a nice roasted potato. I think the number one mistake people make is they don't roast hot enough. Now we're gonna season both sides of this striped bass with just salt and pepper. And I've said this before, but when you sear fish, you always wanna sear the presentation side. That's the top side. That's where the bloodline was. That's the top side of the filet. Pan's nice and hot. We're gonna lay that striped bass in. Once you get that sear, I move the heat down to medium and just let it get a nice little crust. Look at that. In with the butter. And then we, we baste. Okay, so when it gets to the point where it's about cooked, we're gonna take it out. We're gonna get rid of some of this more burnt butter. We're gonna add some shallots. Some morels. And then we're gonna deglaze a little white wine. And we'll put the fish back in. A little bit of that mushroom uh, liquid, kind of like mushroom stock. And we're gonna let that finish while we start plating. So we're gonna take some of these herb roasted potatoes. Now this is our grilled cauliflower. There's our striped bass. And then the last thing to do is to just add a little bit of butter to this sauce. You're gonna see it start to thicken. Once that butter's about melted, some fresh chives. And 
that's our morel sauce right there. Take some of that. I'm just gonna just let it fall right on there. And there is our striped bass with a nice white wine morel sauce. Looks so good. I got a taste tester here. Let's see. Right for the fish first. With a potato. I've been eating the potatoes the whole time. I'll just wait to see what you say. Oh man. <laughs> that sauce, the fish is so tender. That is unbelievable. Who would have thought this came out of the Jersey waters, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fall run. I wouldn't undersell these potatoes. Only about half of them made it through the episode because <laughs> I kept picking them. <laughs> he was picking. But if I could just show you what the fish looks like. Like if you properly cook it, it is just white tender meat practically just falls apart all right everyone i think that's about it i really hope you enjoyed that catch and cook let me know down in the comments how your striped bass season has been going so far i'd love to hear about it and as always thank you so much for watching until we catch or cook something else i'll see you next time on the line cook see you guys